Hello, my name is Joe, and in this course, I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV, and games. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also, if you find this helpful, please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry, games. So, what we're going to do next is now that we've imported our images, is we're going to align them. So, what this will do is this will create a, I believe it's called a tie cloud. And what this does is it's essentially uh, it's the best way to explain it, I guess, is it draws a line to each reference point on an image um, to basically say, well, this image looks like this image. I found this detail on, you know, I found some rust on this that's identical in this image. And it ties images together and then creates almost loads of dots to create a 3D simulation of our uh, in this case our hammer or our 3D mesh, whatever you decide to to scan in. This then allows us to get the data from that and create a full-blown mesh from it. So what we'll do here is that we will um, right-click on Chunk, go down to Process, Align Photos. Now you'll get this little pop-up window here, and accuracy is exactly what it says, um, highest through to lowest. The higher it is, the more accurate it will be, but the uh, more processing time it will take, depending on how powerful your computer is. That could be an extra 10 minutes, or it could be an extra two hours, you know. It's one of those things. Generally, how I work is that I would go set it to medium to make sure that the scan works okay, and you look at it and think, yep, it's near enough, then put it on highest, depending on how valuable the scan is to me, you know, if it was something that was going to be used in a scene that up close, I would make sure it's the best we possibly could, you know, it's one of the, well, and it's also down to the amount of time you've got, if you're more than happy to wait, you know, an hour, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to set this to high because I already know that the quality of the hammer that's going to come out is going to be absolutely fine. Um, then make sure generic pre-selection is ticked. Um, if you want to know more in depth about each of these headings, check out the Metashape manual. The reason I'm not going into too much depth about these is because I want to try and keep it as universal to any program as possible so that, um, you know, for instance, ge you know, generic pre-selection, I can go into exactly telling you what that does, but it might not be the same name in something like Alice Vision or Reality Capture. I'm just trying to show you the principles to apply to your program like I've said before. Now estimated versus sequential. Sequential means that if you have say a proper photogrammetry uh, rig like they do in studios where they have, you may have seen them online where they have sort of a, a little booth that someone can stand in with loads of cameras and then they press a button and then it all goes off in a sequence. So one to a thousand say, this will you can set this to sequential and then the, the program will start on photo one and work all the way through to um, the final photo. Um, we're just going to use estimated. What estimated does is basically it estimates where the photo is in 3D and um, generates our photo. Um, I found for nearly all of my photos this has been exactly what I've used. I've never had a problem with it. Now, if drop down advanced, I've set my key point limit and my tie point limit to uh, 120,000 and 12,000. I believe the default is 40,000 and 4,000. Um, for me, I found that these settings work best. Um, obviously, it increases the amount of time uh, for your images to process, but um, I would advise setting it to that. None of these, just leave this one ticked. We don't ever need to use these, um, and then just minimize that. This will always then be set by default to this. So then what we'll do is we'll press OK. And what this is doing is this is going to process our images. This might take five minutes. This might take five hours. It all depends on the amount of photos you've got and the amount of detail it's trying to get out of it and also how high we've set the um, quality. Uh, then what we've got here is this tells us how long it's taken. This tells us how long it's, le uh, it's left. Now I will say... I wouldn't pay any attention to this part because it can say 53 seconds here, but it might take five minutes or it can say an hour and 20 minutes, which is quite quite often this happens where it'll say like an hour and 20 minutes and it'll literally only take 10 minutes. So it's one of the, these things, the more scans you do, the more you'll, you'll get an idea of how long something's going to take by the amount of photos you've got in here. So it's just one of those things that becomes, you, you know, common common knowledge to you the more you do it. So I wouldn't pay much attention to what's left here. What I'll do is I'll pause the video here and wait till this is finished and then we'll carry on. So once this is finished processing, we should get something like this. So I'm gonna show you something here. Sometimes you can get objects that are right out like this. And what we can do is instantly focus on them by clicking on this little icon uh, con here, which is called a reset viewport. So click it and it zooms us in. You can also navigate the um, window by holding the middle mouse button to move um, up, down, left, right. 
um, you can also use the right mouse button to do that. You can scroll in and out of the view using just scrolling on your middle mouse a wheel. And then you can navigate your object by using this um, uh, rotate uh, viewport um, widget. So you, blue moves you um, in the uh, z-axis, green is in the y-axis, and x is in the x-axis. So we use that to navigate our object here. You can grab in the um, in the middle of all of these to move in any direction there. If you only just want to move in one direction, just grab the ring that you want to move in. And um, so this is basically, as you can see here, generated a 3D um, representation of our object but if we zoom in close it's all little dots so this is basically tied our images together now if we turn our images on which is this camera here um, sometimes what will happen is you'll get something that may look like this not showing any images so what we'll do is we'll click the little arrow next to the camera icon and show thumbnails so basically this is showing all our images where they are in 3d and um, how it's basically you can see as our tripods move down it's aligned the images up correctly to where um, our hammer is so what we can do is we turn that back off. Um, we can see this is a very clean scan. And what we're going to do next to show you how to optimize the cameras, um, which I don't think will be needed for this, but I'll show you what to do anyway. So let's move on to the next part. So the next step is um, just optimizing our points. What I'll do is I'll turn these cameras back off. Um, so just on this little camera icon. And what this will do is that although this is a uh, actually a, a very good scan, um, you sometimes get points like stragglers like this that sort of don't know where they should be and what optimizing can do is sometimes help pull these back into where they should be so how to optimize is very simple what we'll do is right click on chunk process optimize cameras now you may see something you may not depending on your scans um, but i always do this because it's just good practice so what we'll do there so bring up this menu um i generally just leave the settings as they are sometimes i'll turn these on if i'm not um you know not getting the results i want but generally um these fit um exactly what want uh, what we want um you'll if you want to learn more about this i'll just generally uh, just check out the manual for metashade because um, i'm trying to keep this as um independent from the software as possible so that you can you know i'm trying to use features that are uh, will appear in other other softwares like alice vision 3d zephyr um so i'm trying to avoid um using things that are just specific to meta shape so that you can apply this to all your so any software that you use so what we'll do here is we press ok and it'll process and it's moved some of the points in and um we're, we're pretty much done for this uh this part so let's move on to the next part so i'm going to quickly just show you uh, an error that can sometimes happen and I'll show you a few potential fixes for it. So sometimes when you've done an, a photo alignment what will come up is an error that says um, fail to align some photos, um, please reset the alignment. Um, now this, in this case you can see over here, so what we'll do is we'll just drop down our chunk on the left here, drop down our cameras and then if we scroll down, you'll get some cameras here that I've purposely reset the alignment to show this error that say NA, so this means not aligned. Now, you can see in this case that it doesn't really matter. It hasn't affected our object at all. Um, so you don't really need to worry about it. But what can happen is, for me, I would love these to all be aligned. And, you know, it's okay if the odd one, if you're just getting one that's not aligned. But if you're getting a whole section like this, it means there's something wrong with your photos um, or there's something wrong with your settings. So the first thing I would try is um, to right click on the um, one that says NA and align selected camera. So that you can see there, solve the issue. Um, now, I know that these are all okay. So um, what I can do is select all of these and go align selected cameras and this will go through that. So it's solved all these issues. So if that doesn't work for you, what you want to then do is scroll up to chunk, right click on chunk, process aligned photos, and you want to make sure the estimated is selected. Um, sometimes you can have it on sequential, and obviously it's going through your photos, trying to go from photo one, two, three, four, and it's trying to work it out, but sometimes that just doesn't work. I found that estimated, um, as I said in a previous video, just seems to work for everything. Then what you want to do is make sure the reset current alignment is ticked and press OK, and that's going to go through your process again. And if that doesn't work, then I would look at your photos. If you're getting, as I say, if you're getting the old photo, you know, you're getting one or two, and it hasn't affected anything on your mesh, then I would just ignore it, delete it, 
Um, but if you're getting huge chunks, so say you're getting all of those, then I would look at your photos because it means that you've done something wrong. You might not have had enough overlap. So bear in mind, you need about 80% overlap on your images on the previous image. So you don't want to be going, say, from something like that, so a photo like that, to a photo like that, to a photo like that, because there's not enough information in between to generate the 3D um uh, points that we're seeing here. Um, you also might want to check that your photos aren't blurry and that the uh, variation in light, you know, you could be going from dark to light to dark to light to, you know, and you want to make sure that your photos are consistent in everything, like I've said in the previous tutorials, previous sections. Um, we want to make sure that they're consistent. My, my thing is, if we get it right with the photos straight away, we're going to save ourselves lots of work down the line. Of course, this comes with practice. The more you do it, the, the better you'll become at it. And, the, you know, the, you'll know that I need this amount of photos, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, those, those are three little tips there that will help um, hopefully solve these problems for you. So let's move on to the next section. So I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown here of tie point um, detail. So our tie points are all, all these little things here. Um, basically, the more photos we have that are good quality photos we have, the better uh, sort of silhouette we'll get here so if we zoom out it almost looks like it's ready to be a, a 3d mesh that we could export out and um, you can see here that when we go around um, we have consistent generally consistent points all the way around we don't have like a massive chunk missing here if we do have like chunks here or less points in an area we need to look at our photos because it means that our photos for this area maybe don't have enough overlap could have been blurry haven't aligned properly um, things like that. So obviously the better um, tie cloud that we get, the better points we get here, the better results we're going to get with our mesh because what it's doing is it'll look at all these sections and go right yeah we've generated a as you can see yeah, pretty much a 3D representation of it so we can apply that to our dense clouds or our depth maps and that we're going to be generating to create um, a good um, mesh and uh, more importantly, well, no, not more importantly, but just as important, a good texture from it. So always bear in mind, check that you're not missing chunks from your um, meshes, because if you are, you're gonna get problems when we generate our meshes. So let's move on to the next bit. So I'm gonna show you a quick thing here that I do just um, to keep things tidy, is removing these little stragglers. So basically anything within this square and I believe this applies to a lot of um, 3D uh, photo scanning uh, softwares that anything within this, this square um, is the only thing that's going to be captured. So we've got little stragglers out here, but generally I just like to, to tidy them up because it's just, it looks, it's easier to look at. You don't have to do this, um, but I'll sort of show you anyway. So what we do is we select our marquee tool up here and then um, we can select our point here so you can see it's highlighted these little pink dots so what we can do is we can select those and then press delete on the keyboard and we can go around and select what we don't want um, to be scanned so we're going to remove some of this white platform here um, again as I say you don't have to do this you can do this a bit later down the line and um, when we I'll show you how to remove unwanted bits of mesh from our objects um, but I just generally do this because it's it's can often be easier to grab hold of these points than it can um, meshes down the line and it just helps the anything within this square if we remove it. It's just because it's we've removed, say, parts of this turntable here, it's just going to be less for the computer to process and can speed up our, um, depending on how, obviously how big the area is, can speed up our processing times when we're generating the mesh. So we've done that. So let's move on to the next section.